Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a romantic fantasy film called The Mermaid. Be ready for some spoilers ahead! In a society where humans are polluting the environment and killing all the species by destroying their homes, a collection of wealthy people are bidding to buy an island called the Green Gulf. The prices become ridiculous after many races from the competitions, but a businessman called Leo manages to purchase the land after agreeing to pay well over $20 billion. The business tycoons all gather towards Leo's home, appearing in their fancy vehicles one after the other, including a billionaire called Chen who looks like a Walmart version of Iron Man. Leo welcomes everyone into the house, but the people soon reveal that the entire bidding was a ploy to make the man lose a lot of money, as the island is a conservation area and the home to many dolphins, making the building of real estate impossible. Just when they're laughing at their rival's misfortune, Leo reveals that he actually obtained the permit for construction after proving that the dolphins no longer live there anymore. The people quickly show their true colors, especially Chen, who continuously insults Leo for deceiving him, but his jetpack soon malfunctions, causing the man to fly around like a mosquito. Laughing at how desperate his rivals have become, Leo celebrates immediately by hosting a large party, where the man is surrounded by numerous beautiful women. One of his business rivals, Roland, takes off her watch and throws it into the pool, telling the girls that whoever takes it gets to keep it. After revealing that it's worth $8 million, the women all jump into the waters and desperately try to retrieve the watch, showing that they're nothing more than gold diggers. Roland tells Leo that she wants to be a partner in the new project, while trying to seduce the man by using her female assets and eventually getting a deal. However, their celebration is interrupted by a woman that has very unique makeup on her face, resulting in the bodyguards tackling her down and flipping her onto the ground. Leo immediately stops the chaos and tries to find out who this woman is, but soon realizes that she's not even on the list for the guests. It turns out that the girl's name is Shan, and she continues to flirt awkwardly while throwing her phone number at the man, demanding that he call her for a future date. Trying to end this embarrassment, Leo quickly takes the paper and tells the man to throw her out, thinking that she's nothing more than a fan. The woman goes home while riding on her skateboard, eventually arriving at a house near the Green Gulf, where she enters into a massive cave that brings her onto a boat. It turns out that Shen is a mermaid from the oceans, and all the people in her tribe has been forced into this boat with nowhere to go. The reason Leo was able to obtain the building permit on the Green Gulf was because he put numerous machines into the oceans nearby that creates powerful sonars in the water, driving all the dolphins away and killing anything that dares to return. Little did he know that this also affected the mer people greatly, and their leader Octopus plans to kill the men so that they can finally return to their homes. The mer people plan to achieve this by seducing the men, using their most beautiful girl in the tribe, but their capabilities are highly questionable as their grandma assassin clearly has difficulty telling the difference between friend and foe. On top of that, their overestimation of Shen's flirting ability is very apparent as they wait desperately behind her cell phone for Leo to call her, not realizing that the man is planning to have aggressive cuddling with his new business partner. However, the woman manages to completely soil the mood when she reminds the man that they're not on the same level despite their similar wealth, as she was born into royalty and Leo had to earn his money via hard work. Realizing that Roland has always looked down on him, Leo decides to call Shen for a date, telling her that he'll pick her up in 10 minutes. He tells Roland that he regrets making her his partner and begins walking away from the woman, choosing pride over having fun later in the bedroom. The mer people begin to gather up all their weapons and plan to hide behind the walls, getting ready to ambush Leo the moment he enters the place. Shan walks out from the door and shows up alongside her very unique taste of fashion, but only sees Leo's bodyguard here instead of the man himself. They take her to Leo's office building and tells her that their boss will be coming soon, but the girl immediately poisons the water right after the secretary has left. To her surprise, the head of security shows up to examine her instead of her date, and the man notices her grabbing onto the drinks, suspecting that she's trying to poison his boss. The security guard takes the two cups and offers her to drink, but Shan's nervousness causes her to forget which one's poisoned, and she's forced to risk her life by swallowing the water. 
Very soon, her face begins to distort in pain as the security guard looks at her in shock, but it turns out that she simply didn't like the lemon that was in her water. The man laughs at her reaction, but immediately begins to spit out foam from his mouth and falls down onto the ground. The girl tries to save the man by pouring alcohol into his mouth, which cures him from the poison, but the minions give their boss more lemonade to drink from the same cup, causing him to fall down once again. Amidst the chaos, Shan finally sees Leo walking out from the office, and begins following the man so that she can finally assassinate her target. She tries throwing the sea urchins at Leo, but gets knocked in the head instead as the man shouts at his employees for their incompetence. The woman immediately hides behind the furniture and tries to ambush her target again, but fails to notice the glass in front of her and gets hit on the face by her own weapon. No matter how many times she tries to throw the urchins, they always seem to come back onto her face like a boomerang, causing her to nearly pass out from the poisons. Shan refuses to give up and tries to ambush the man from below the couch, but Leo begins dancing to his favorite song called Invincible and dodging all her attacks using his killer moves. He eventually steps on the woman's hand, causing her tremendous pain while he shakes alongside the music. The mermaid tries to stab him with all her might, but ends up piercing herself, as the man appears to be truly invincible. When Leo finally turns his back towards the woman, Shan shakes off the urchins and launches at her target, but only to be hit in the face by a golf club, as the man is shocked to see the girl on the floor. She tries to flirt at the man once again, but Leo only wants her to leave, throwing piles and piles of cash at the woman thinking that that is all she wants. To his surprise, the girl refuses all his money and confuses him even more, as he has never met anyone like her before. Just when the man is about to leave in frustration, he quickly turns around towards the woman and begins acting like he's in love, trying to put on a show for Roland who just arrived. Leo takes Shen into his arms and pretends to be having a great time, as Roland stares at the girl using her venomous eyes that's full of jealousy. The mermaid decides to take Leo to have dinner, but the man is shocked that she took him to a restaurant on the streets, refusing to eat something that he thinks is made for peasants. However, the man is unable to hold back his hunger and begins devouring the chickens alongside the girl, realizing how good the food actually is. Surprisingly, Leo begins crying as he finishes eating, reminiscing about his childhood when his family was very poor and they had to steal chickens that tasted exactly like this. Ever since that day, he swore that he'll become the richest person in the world and never suffer like that ever again, but Shan thinks that the man's goals are very silly in nature. She tells Leo that money is not worth anything if one day the planet can no longer harbor even a single drip of clean water or a single breath of clean air. The man is impressed by her idealism and writes her a final check of a million dollars, but Shan takes the paper and throws it into the fire, claiming that money means nothing to her and she's only here because she likes him. Shan begins singing to the man, and Leo soon realizes that the woman has the same taste of music as himself, causing him to sing as well. The girl becomes so engulfed in their duet that she unleashes her mermaid voice and shatters all the glass in the area, knocking off the man's fake mustache at the same time. The girl takes Leo onto numerous carnival rides, and the man is finally able to let loose while having a great time as he begins to remember the good memories from his childhood as well. Later that night, they go back to the island where the woman claims that she lives, but her happiness is quickly ended when she receives a phone call from Octopus as her people plan to ambush Leo from behind the door. The man walks the mermaid towards her house and begins holding her hand, while Shan appears to have developed feelings for Leo as well. Before the woman opens the door, she questions Leo about what he wants to see if he only had this moment to live, and the man answers immediately that he would only look at her. Shan is moved by Leo's answer and takes off her clothing, trying to reveal that she's a mermaid, but the man fails to see anything without lights and suggests that they go inside so that he can properly examine her. Shan smiles and walks into the room, closing the door and saving the man's life as Leo thinks that the woman is playing hard to get. Octopus is furious that their target has apparently escaped, but Shan immediately receives another phone call from Leo, asking her to go on a second date already. The Mer people hears this and begins chanting for Leo's death, but Shan is clearly very conflicted about her mission. The next day, Leo takes the woman to a sushi restaurant while Octopus plans to disguise as a chef and kill the man himself, but before he can make the move, numerous bodyguards appear and ruins the plan. 
In order to avoid suspicion, Octopus has no choice but to pretend that his tentacles are the meals and begins cooking them on the table while trying desperately to hide the suffering. The chefs make the situation even worse as they cut off the tentacles using very painful methods causing the octopus to make increasingly terrifying faces as Leo thinks that this is all part of the act. Eventually, the man is no longer able to endure the pain and spits out a cloud of ink, escaping from the windows in the last moment. Shen tries to explain that this is part of the man's performance, while Leo pays little attention to what just happened as he has more important announcements to make. The man takes out a wedding ring and puts it on the woman's hand, trying to marry her right away, as he realizes that she's the best thing that's ever happened to his life. Shen has trouble accepting this and calls the man a fool, showing Leo her knife and telling him that she's here to kill him. But the man knocks away her weapon and proceeds to kiss her passionately, while the woman cries from the conflicting emotions. Their embrace is quickly interrupted by Roland as she walks into the room, forcing Shen to leave from the embarrassment. The woman is furious at Leo for loving someone else, but the man has no interest in her and demands that she stop following him from now on. Later that night, Octopus is furious that they failed to kill their target once again and begins suspecting that Shen has actually fallen in love. Although the woman denies the accusation, Octopus wants her to look in his eyes and swear, but this becomes difficult as the grandma turns on the ceiling fan, making the man spin in frustration. However, their arguments are interrupted by knockings from the outside, and Shen opens the door only to see that Leo has come to apologize. The man notices the mermaid's fishtail and sees numerous other mer people in the room, but he's quickly captured before he can run and knocked unconscious. When the man wakes up, Octopus shouts at him with anger and shows him all the tribesmen that his company has hurt, deciding to kill him right away. But Leo begs for them to stop, stating that his death would not disable the sonars. He wants them to give him a second chance so that he can disable the machines, as he never expected the sonars to be so harmful. But the octopus is blinded by rage and begins choking Leo furiously. Luckily, Shen is able to cut off the tentacle in the last moment, saving the man's life and giving him a chance to escape while everyone looks at her in shock. The octopus becomes infuriated by the woman's betrayal and tries to kill her, but is ultimately unable to slay one of his own people. Leo immediately goes to the police and tries to explain what just happened to him, but after hearing the man's descriptions and drawing out the suspect, the officers have a hard time keeping a straight face as they nearly choke themselves out by laughing. With no other choice, Leo decides to examine the sonars personally and tells the doctors to blast the machine right at him. A powerful shockwave charges towards the man and causes him great pain, quickly forcing Leo onto the ground as he yells for it to stop. To his surprise, the doctor tells him that they only use 10% of the machine's power. Realizing the harm that he's done, Leo immediately tells the board members that they have to stop using the sonars, but the people all disagree as the construction has already started. Roland shows up as well, and after hearing the board members' complaints, the woman unexpectedly agrees with Leo and orders the sonars to be turned off. After finally shutting down the dangerous weapons, Roland wants to know the reasons behind the sudden change of plan. Thinking that the woman is on his side, Leo tells her everything about the Mer people and how they're stuck on the island because of the company's sonars. However, Roland is not surprised at all by this information as she reveals that her team has been searching for the existence of mermaids for a long time. In fact, they have already found multiple bodies of the Mer people, and now they can retrieve live samples, making their company unthinkable profits as a result. Realizing that the woman is out for blood, Leo immediately tries calling Shen, but she never picks up the phone. With no other choice, the man drives quickly towards the mermaid's location. At the same time, Roland tells all her men to head towards the island as they prepare to capture and kill all the mer people like their animals. The mercenaries arrive inside the boat and find the place to be completely empty, but after diving into the water, they soon discover that their targets are all hiding inside the pool. The humans quickly point their guns and begin shooting furiously without mercy, causing great injuries to many of the mer people and turning the water red. Very soon, the victims are forced to jump out from hiding as they try desperately to evade the bullets, but ends up stranded on the surface as a result. 
The humans show no sympathy towards the mer people as they begin chopping at their targets and bagging them like nothing more than fishes. Shen jumps out from the water and tries to escape away from the flying weapons, but she quickly gets surrounded by the sheer number of people chasing after her. Luckily, Octopus manages to save her from being captured as he grabs onto her using his tentacles and launching her away from the boat, sending her directly towards the waterfall. However, the mermaid fails to escape as she gets trapped inside a giant net and pounded numerous times by the humans, causing her to fall towards the ground. Numerous humans charge towards the girl with the intention to kill, but a large wave strikes the attackers and knocks them into the water as the elder mermaid appears to save her people. She raises her giant tail and strikes the water using tremendous force, creating giant waves across the pool that consumes the humans entirely. The elder continues to attack the mercenaries by launching water at them, sending the people towards the walls and disabling them very easily, eventually knocking down all the enemies. Before she can relax, one of the enemies fires a grenade at the mermaid, sending her flying across the boat and dropping into the ocean. The elder is surprised to learn that the sonars are not working anymore and tells her people to run for the oceans, resulting in the remaining survivors to finally escape. Shan tries running for the oceans as well, but is quickly attacked by one of the hooks which prevents her from getting away. The mermaid charges desperately away from the boats, but the floaters prevent her from diving deeper, and eventually she's caught up by a helicopter that Roland is in. The woman aims a rocket launcher at Shan and fires the missile, causing a huge explosion underwater that sends the mermaid onto the surface as her body is severely wounded by the attack. The mercenaries quickly surround the girl while Roland tells the men to kill the target, trying to take vengeance for stealing her men. At the same time, Leo is stuck in traffic and tries desperately to call for help, but his men are all stuck in the rush hour just like himself. To his surprise, Leo notices one of his business rivals who owns the jetpack and finally sees a way out from this madness. Just before the mercenaries can fire their weapon, Leo flies in to save the mermaid like a superhero and tells all the men to stop, but Roland grabs the gun and shoots without hesitation, destroying the jetpack as Leo tries to protect his friend. He carries the mermaid and runs quickly for the ocean, but Roland continues shooting her gun and hitting the man multiple times. Leo refuses to give up his friend despite being heavily wounded and eventually makes it to the edge of the walkway. He manages to release the mermaid inside the water before finally collapsing from the wounds as the police rushes in to help. Sometimes later, an author arrives inside the main character's home and begins to interview Leo, trying to find out the truth about the mermaids, but the man simply laughs and tells him that these are only fairy tales made by people. However, Leo quickly reveals that he's no longer single and currently married to Shen who's able to disguise perfectly as a human. The two dive into the oceans and the mermaid shows her husband the wonders and beauties inside her world as she's finally together with her people. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.